it's appealing to a younger market because you've got more space and it's a more of a, a social layout and it is a more enjoyable boat to sail. So, normally on this channel, I'm kind of talking about and promoting how to increase your carbon footprint and how to do more with go fast power boats because essentially this is primarily a power boat channel. But there comes a time and there should be some inclusion in other options, is what I'm trying to say. Um, because you might not always want to focus on power boats and it's okay to look at sailing boats and Therefore, I'm on a sailing boat today. <laughs> so, um, this is the XS11, a brand new model. We've already tested the XS12. So if you wanna have a look at a walkthrough of that, um, click on the link coming up on your screen now and you can check that out. That is the bigger sister to this model. Uh, 37 feet long. No main or major manufacturers are building a catamaran in this size range at the moment. There's a couple of smaller guys, but none of the major guys. This is from the Beneteau group, and this is a cat that punches above its weight. Um, and why, why would powerboat guys like us wanna look at something like this? For a change of scenery, a few more options, and a hell of a lot more space for the same price or less. So just, just remember that. Operating a sailing vessel compared to equivalent size motorboat is vastly cheaper. They do have a saying about sailors, the wind is free and they think everything else should be too. It is a different mindset for those blokes. But anyway, you do you, they can do them. Um, so I'm gonna do a bit of a walkthrough. We have just had a sail. Uh, it's changeable weather today. It's It's been bloody awful, to, to be fair. Um, so it might start raining. We're just gonna, gonna keep going. Um, and I'm gonna show you as much as I possibly can. Um, the XS, at, as I said, built by the Beneto Group, it's the younger version. Or it's, the, it's, it's, it's appealing to a younger market because you've got more space and it's a more of a, a social layout and it is a more enjoyable boat to sail. And I'm gonna talk you through why that is just as the next rain shower starts. Um, check out this amount of volume and space we have up here on the bow. Now look, all multi-holes are gonna have that, so that's nothing unique to the XS. Um, but just taking you through what we have here, got a couple of removable sun lounges. Now these backrests can lie down and then you've got more than enough storage downstairs to put them away, but storage options you're not wanting at all. We'll just start up here and make our way around. Um, we're gonna cut to some shots of these, but these are absolutely massive sail lockers. And just quickly for some perspective, I'm standing up on a fake floor. You go through a hatch down here and that goes down another two feet. And the length is all the way to the bow and then the bulkhead finishes here. So just, just imagine what you can fit in here and then double it because it's a cat so that's pretty awesome that allows you to prep a boat like this for some real long-term sailing trips now just make sure Mika remembers how to use the joystick there yeah, there we go <laughs> and it, yeah it just allows you to prep the boat for some really long-term sailing trips um, or just keep the boat tidy you know have all your your other bits and pieces inside the boat and your, your, your toys, your surfboards, um, your wakeboards, or your other um, you know, activity uh, bits and pieces inside those lockers and not inside the cabin where they're gonna muck things up. So that's great. You've got our two sun lounges just there. Underneath both of those sun lounges is a huge big storage locker. Again, we're gonna cut to that shot because I'm gonna keep talking about a few things on the bow, but that is ordinarily where you would fit a generator in a catamaran. But on this boat, XS don't actually offer the generator because most people are going to lithium now. So we do have 240 power, we have an inverter, but with lithium batteries, 
um, combine that with solar panels. That's kind of all the rage now and it works just great. I've been using it today. Um, we've got our anchor windlass set up in there as well and the water tanks centrally mounted in that storage space. So you can see the anchor windlass, it's a quick windlass, runs in this channel, the chain just here, just to keep it all nice and directionally controlled and then through your anchor roller just here and we have dual rollers so we can pull up a mooring just here. And then forward of that, because it's the excess and it's designed as a little bit more of a sporty vessel than their other brand, Lagoon, um, they have things like this Prodder just here. So you can run a code zero on this boat. It's all good gear and they've done the, uh, the purchase halyard setup. So it makes it a little bit easier to raise the sails on your arms. This is the jib and this is on a self tacker. So this is, if you see sailors um, releasing lines on one winch, hauling in on the other and then grinding on, you don't really have to do that so much on this boat because you've got this beautiful track just here and the boat will tack itself. So the way that works, you just have the one line that goes back to the cockpit, goes around a block just there and then it finishes just there and this track allows it to run freely on these ball bearings. So simplifies things, puts the boat um, in an arrangement where a single person can operate it most of the time. And then when you have stronger breeze like we did today, it's more of a, a two person operation. So focusing on the mast, it's double spreader rig, and we'll be able to cut to some shots of that because I sent the drone up a little bit earlier for you to see. One thing worth noting, a lot of cats, now Mika, I wanna make sure you've got all this in shot, so don't get too close to me or at least come around here and show all the guys. I might even jump up. A lot of cats, the boom is quite high. Not only is that ugly, you just have this big wasted space uh, in terms of the slot in between this cabin here, the cabin top and the boom. So you just got air flowing through and it creates for an, a little bit of an inefficient um, sailing setup and wasted sail area. So by bringing the boom and having this slot only a couple of inches wide in between the cabin top and where the sailing stuff starts, you just get a better performing rig. So this mainsail, it's a little bit of a sporty setup. It's got quite a lot of roach on the main. So what that is, when you get to the top of the mainsail and the mainsail goes out like that, rather than coming down, let's say on a, a triangle shape, and forgive me if you already know this stuff, so don't, you don't need to leave too many comments in the description. Some of you are gonna know, some of you won't. Um, if you have a sail that goes down like that, you have more roach, therefore more sail area and more speed because you're catching more air, so to speak. Um, we've got the boom bag, got the lazy jacks, that's all just stock standard stuff so you can pack the main sail away. But one of the things really worth talking about is all of this real estate up here. So in Australia, we like to have our shade. It's, it's vitally important and excess are maximizing your protection with this roof. It goes all the way to the back of the boat. So everybody on the lunch table downstairs, and we'll see that when we get there, is protected from the sun and from the weather. And there is an option to actually convert that into an opening sunroof. I just, it might not be super popular in Australia because we, are, we, don't, we have enough sun. So you can do that if you need, but whether it's necessary, that's up to you. So I'm just gonna pop down and I think let's uh, head, let's head down the port side of the boat. Um, water intake just here, as I said, the main water tank is below centrally mounted at the base of the mast. The mast is deck stepped, as you'd expect on a boat like this. And then as we're coming back, we now have our hatches going down below. So that hatch just there uh, that I've just walked across goes into the forward cabin. This hatch just here goes into the head. And then just here, what do we have? That's waste out for the port head. In terms of moving your way forward and aft, we've got Midship cleat just here with a uh, with a little rope protector on the side. Um, I feel pretty safe. There's not a boat that rocks around very much, so you're not really going to be feeling unsafe. And, and even when you're underway, we've got this deep channel just here, which is going to take some mostly rainwater. I would say would make its way off the decks like that and drain out nice and neatly. And then as we're coming our way back, we've got a hatch here and same again on the other side, that's into your main cabin. 
which is huge. So we're going to get to that in a second. So now as we get down here, um, we are, it's a dual helm setup. So I'm at the port helm, but the boat is designed in such a way that your starboard helm is your primary helm and, and we'll get to that, it'll make sense in a second, but before I do, because it's a dual helm setup, a lot of cats of this size, they go for one single helm and you are forward on the bulkhead and raised, so you sort of, you're not, you're not part of the action. Now, if you're like really old and retired and, you know, going on some long cruise, that might be good for you and your partner, but if you're... If you're a little bit more social and want to entertain and enjoy your sailing and actually want to look at the sails, you, you might prefer a setup like this where you can get out, feel the wind in your hair, look at the sails, talk to all your mates and drink a beer or a cocktail, whatever you choose. So it's kind of, it's a little bit more fun, put it that way. Um, in terms of the setup here, we've got this nice sporty wheel. I've got a display just here. I've got my autopilot and my wind instrument, drink holder, drink holder. I have no idea what that is. Um, and then I have emergency rudder just here. So because it's a 37 foot boat, the rudder is forward of the engine and that allows you to have a large cabin because if you didn't have that set up, the engine would have to be further forward and you'd be sacrificing space in the sleeping area. But what they've done here, are quite an ingenious little setup in terms of helming. Obviously, you can sit here, but you can have another person maybe more joining you. But then when you need to board, you actually just like so, and then one, two, release, and that can actually just clip or just hang down here and that gives you access to the transom just here. So we're on the port side just here, we've got a four step swim ladder. We're gonna hear you on the microphone, guys. <laughs> hey, we're doing this on the run. Um, so we've got a four step swim ladder just here and then we have a fresh water shower. That is hot and cold on the port side and engine access is just here. Now we will cut to shots of this, but this is a 30 horsepower Yanma sail drive and we've got a three bladed folding prop on this one. Engine start battery right next to it. And we've also got the battery on off controls and even an engine room light down there as well. So it's all kind of very professionally laid out. I, I see lots of flow code in there. So it's all good stuff. So from a daily checks point of view, it's just below the helm. The other thing worth noting, as we move our way around the cockpit, there are hard points for attaching a safety harness when you are at sea. But come on down, Mika, and in, have a look at this. So just pan up there and just show everyone this space. Hello, guys. <laughs> Sorry to tell you to shut up. It's just, I can hear you on the microphone. So um, this is good enough for 10 or 12 people. And if you just see me at the primary helm position, that's my point about wanting a social boat. So if you're, if you're coming from a power boat and you like doing your social days out, but you fancy yourself as a sailor or you wanna learn how to do a bit of sailing and then maybe take that experience and turn it into holidays, this is a great boat to do that because you know, you might dream of buying a boat and just going on holidays all the time, but let's face it, life is probably gonna get in the way of that. So if you can buy a boat and use it for what you really will use it for 80% of the time, which is probably gonna be day sailing and entertaining with your friends, perhaps this layout is gonna be much better suited to that. And then when you are doing your offshore trips, sure, you're in the weather, you're in the sun, um, but you might enjoy that because you enjoy the sail. And that's probably gonna be a lot less of the amount of time that you actually use the boat. So anyway, that's just my two cents. And that's why I think this is a really fantastic layout. But as we can see, one, two, well, maybe three. What do you reckon? Four. You're always worried about the person in the corner with their feet. Three, four, five. Yeah, five if we're really close. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A, few over there. a few over there. So easily two or three there. And then I'm gonna get a wet bum doing this, but I'm, this is what I do for you guys. So this is a bit of a rock star position. I like this. I feel like I'm in, in, in control of the party. So 
you can option this as a teak table and a drop down table and have a cushion in there. I think that would be lovely because that would be my afternoon nap spot out of the wind because you are completely protected just in there. Out here, not so much. You don't have any protection from the roof on this seat. Um, and I don't think that really matters because all these seats here are protected. And as you can see, we've got these plastic roll down covers or clears just here and they've got their little stainless steel attachment points and then there is some doors on either side so this could all be enclosed and so you've got another outdoor room so you, you can have your alfresco dining when it's nice weather and if it's a little bit windy or cold you can close it up and still use this area or you have the option to go inside but before we get there let's finish talking about what we see here so um Actually, come over here and I'll just show you the, the primary helm. Then I want to talk to you guys about the, uh, the dinghy davit system. So here we are at the starboard helm. This is what we would refer to as the primary helm because we have the engine controls and the sailing controls all at hand. In moderate conditions, um, this is absolutely a solo operated vessel. If it's a little bit breezy, you probably want to add someone else into the mix just to give you a hand. But you, you've got your engine start stops just here and uh, all your, your necessary gauges for the Yanmars. We've got a small chart plotter. That's a touch, touch screen Raymarine and we have the autopilot. Now the autopilot, is, it's, it's crucial on a boat like this if you want to solo or shorthanded sail because this will allow you if you're, even on your you know your sydney harbour afternoon sails you're going to leave the marina and you've got to you know, tidy up the ropes bring in the fenders and all that sort of thing you can just put the autopilot on put along at four knots and tidy up the decks uh, and all your friends can be relaxing enjoying themselves in the cockpit and just creates for a nicer experience now your um your winch is just here this is a manual winch i would personally electrify that one you can do that as an option because um it's all about making itself making the process easy for you and up here we've got topping lift uh jib sheet mainsail halyard second reef um two main sheets so the way this system works is you have two main sheets and then you can give it a little bit of purchase on the windward side if you want to change the shape of the sail and your first reef here rope bag just there a little bit on the small side but it, it's you know it's the space that we have available um so let's go you stay there mika and i'll just point out a bit more here so this underneath this seat is storage this will actually hinge up now this is a good place for um hoses maybe a couple of fenders and a few lines so you don't have to take them below you've got those two lockers up the front just in front of the water tank which are shallowish lockers and you've got this one too the the bow lockers are quite deep so i wouldn't put um items that i want to access on a daily basis in those lockers because you're gonna with my little arms i probably might not be able to reach down the bottom so this is a sensible spot for things that you're going to use regularly um, then we have diesel in and that looks like diesel two tanks two holes two engines that makes sense and we have bilge pump just here and another one in the same position on starboard so you just put a little handle on there and pump away once again that's your emergency bilge pump we have two holes there's going to be electric as well so Let's start making our way in. You just stay there and just pan around, Mika, and let's just kind of soak all this in. Oh, that's cool. I love all these little sensible little design ideas. I like that. Um, oh, that's a little bit sexy too. Okay, so as you start to enter the main cabin, before we get there, we have another, this is actually, this is important. This is where you put your safety harness and you can, these are dotted around the cockpit so you can release and then hook on to the next one if you're sailing offshore. This is our gas locker just here because we have gas cooking down below. And this is where you put your thongs. So it's also a drain, but this is where you put your thongs before you go inside. And then if this was my boat, I'd have a nice little welcome mat with sails on it or something so I can wipe my feet. So now we're in, the main part of the saloon but before i get there i'll just explain this door system so we've got really good visibility all the way around so from either helm there's there isn't really a hindrance in terms of 
um, looking for other boats on the water, you can see very, very well. Um, and having glass doors like this obviously just helps. The way you operate this one, we have a latch here, another one here, and then that slides across. And then, now we're completely closed up and out of the weather, but if I wanna, if it's cold and I still wanna hand food out from the galley, I can do it like this. So, or if you wanna separate the party, for example, the kids might be in here and the adults are out there, you've got that option where you can have it a little bit closed, but also have access to the outside. It might be a good idea for excess to consider having these windows as an option to open in the future, but that's up to them. So this is all very nice and open plan, but let's start to talk about what we see. So Mika, you start to make your way in and make sure you guys can see all of this. So I'm over here on the starboard side. Um, this is your nav station, sort of like little office. There is a, another dedicated office on this boat. We are on a three cabin layout. There is an option to do a four cabin layout on this boat. But you just got a small, shallow little area there. We've got this little, these little bins here. It's good for phones and sunglasses and that, that sort of thing. We've got the VHF just here. We've got the USB charging just here. That's the Victron Energy. That's the amp hour meter just there. And this will be to do with the inverter. And this is a, uh, oh yeah, that looks like a battery and systems monitor just there. We've got light just here, that probably goes, oh yep, yeah, single white light. And we've got our 12 volt DC panel just here. This is a speaker for the VHF, and that looks like an autopilot control down there. And then we've also got access behind the panel just there. One of the themes with basically, I feel like all Beneto products, because I really noticed this on the, um, on the Swift Trawl that we filmed last year. Beneteau Group are probably one of the best groups or factories or designers that maximize small space usage. I don't know if that's the right way to put it. That, that they make the most out of the space available. They put really clever, simple little solutions. Whenever I get on these boats, I look at the things that they've done. And I go, huh, that's a great idea. Like if you're into tiny houses or or you know, any of those themes that go along with sensible use of small space. I think Beneteau Group are at the top of that sort of thinking. Anyway, um, so let's make our way through. We're in the galley. Now, Mika, do you need to go back a little bit and show this galley? For, can everyone see it from there? So you've got workspace over there, but your primary workspace is gonna be here on starboard. If I was working at the galley, Someone can still pass, but if they're fat, they might struggle a little bit, but you could, yeah, you could still do it, it, it'll still work. Um, now, isotherm fridge just here, so that is one of these thingamabobs, and that's got a little freezer drawer just there, and then a large ledge just here. This, this would actually kind of be good for those little herb gardens, I reckon. Anyway, you do you. Um, we've got some um, holders for our cutlery just up here, tea, sugar, coffee, all those little bits and pieces. You can do this on a catamaran because it doesn't heal over so much compared to a monohull. Down this side, we've got lots of more little storage nooks as well. So salts, peppers, all those sorts of things will go really nicely just there. Now, twin stainless steel sink. Not super deep. It doesn't need to be because it's not a boat that's gonna heal over greatly, so not really the end of the world. Hot and cold tap just there. And then we've got a two burner gas cooker just here and an oven just in here with two drawers and that's gas as well. Below it we have another drawer just here so you could do all your cutlery in there. And this was, from memory, this was like a shallow storage so it's not really pots and pans in that one if, unless they were really small. But in here you have a bin, lots of space for more cleaning gear and your gas shut off valves for both cooker and the oven are under here as well. Access to all the drainage for the galley there too. Now one slightly weird thing, I don't know if this is like, I guess we'll find out when the sun goes down. There isn't actually any down lights in here. So if you're eating and you want down lights, you don't have them. But what you do have is these lovely strip lights 
that go all the way around and they bounce light off the ceiling. So it's going to create like a really nice ambience. Is that, is that a word? Yeah, ambience. I'm going to say ambience. It's going to be nice, gentle light in here, which will be really enjoyable for having a meal or socializing. But if you were trying to work at your desk, so to speak, and do some office work, it won't be enough light for that, you know, if you need to focus on something. So it just is what it is. Um, more storage here. Plates, that sort of stuff here. You can put some, I'd put like serving platters up there maybe, and more, you know, uh, cutting boards, things like that, because they've got a ledge here. So that's, that's a sensible spot for that. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over there. So Mika, why don't you come over here and we'll try and get all this in. Now this area here, like sort of makes sense when you, when you come in, because you will be, um, you know, you might, oh, I forgot to talk about the tender davit actually, those tender davits. When you come off your tender um, and you are using this boat in holiday mode, you might have all your, your shopping and that sort of stuff. This is a good place to put things down and organize yourself. So kind of makes sense for that because you can also, you got your shopping bags, you might want to load the fridges up. So you got your main fridge here and this, is freezers. So this is perfect for cruising. All of these drawers, one, two, three, four, are freezers. So you can actually load all your steaks and your seafood and whatever that you've bought from the shops for your longer term storage in there. You can also use this area for phone charging and we've got our fusion control just here for the stereo. And from memory, oh yeah, that was just another USB. So USB charging here as well. This just screams out like a fancy pot plant like they've got there, um, or just something to dress the boat when you are in port. Now, uh, I wanna make my way around here and then we're gonna go down into the starboard hull. So Mika, you pop up and then just try and get all this. Here we go, more rain. So the strip lighting, you could probably see with my hands here, there's strip lighting here it goes all the way around. So that's what's giving us that really nice feel. But as I said, you, you are lacking the direct light if you were wanting to work at the table just there. We've got a fan just here. We've got the windows, the fixed windows wrapping all the way around and then super important on a catamaran, decent size forward facing windows. So when it's really hot, you pop these open and you'll get a nice breeze through the boat. Now I didn't mention it when I was up on the foredeck, but there is actually an option for a whole big sunshade up the front there. And that can actually be held up by a halyard and then protect that whole bow area in shade. This table can also be optioned as a drop down. I'm not sure if I mentioned that either. Now there is storage underneath all of these. So this one's storage and that one is storage as well. So that's a good place for long-term items, um, light switches, in sensible spots, I think I've covered everything. So Mika, why don't you start following me down? So because this is the three cabin version, this is vast. So I think what I'm gonna have to do, you come down Mika and go into the loo and then just shoot back and let's just try and let everyone appreciate this. This is the selling feature in my opinion for this boat. And something that I, I've, I believe is the case, I don't know for a fact, but just I remember filming the 12 last year, this bed is massive. Like it's, this is ginormous, like, just a second. So, you're not supposed to lie this way, but you can. So, this is huge. From memory in the 12, now I could be wrong, but from memory in the 12, there was some space to walk around the side of the bed. So I think in the 11, they've just done away with that space and created the most massive bed that I've seen on a catamaran of this size ever, which is great. You have an escape hatch just overhead. That's also gonna give you some ventilation. The crossflow ventilation is fantastic because you've got a side opening, a top opening, another escape hatch, which could also be, I don't know if you open it for ventilation actually, um, and a forward facing hatch just there. They've all got blinds for the sun and this one's got a privacy and sun block out but it's just it's one of those clip-on ones so you don't see it in place right now. Um, storage, see how this comes up on gas struts? 
happy days. So just imagine you, uh, you know, you might have the boat up at Hamilton Island or something, you fly in for the weekend, you got all your luggage, airline luggage, that's the place to put it all. So that's, that's ideal. I don't know if there's anything I need. Oh, look at that. Okay. For shoes, that's pretty good. So then we get to the office area and it is a proper office. You've got this nice little puffy thing to sit on. You've got a good amount of workspace just here. Um, you, know, you could put a laptop up here. I can imagine people maybe even permanently mounting monitors up here, have your laptop in here or even, and even just a small little keypad so it's all nice and neat. But anyway, you do you. This could also do well for makeup. You got storage here and here for bits and pieces, downlight, charging, USB, more charging, more USB, and a fan just up there. So, you know, if you wanna come down here and do some work, check some emails, edit some videos like me, um, this would be a great spot to do that. Um, so before we go forward, let's just show you what else we have here. Really good access into the build. So one, two, and three access into the build. I don't know why they don't flow, coat on the, uh, flow coat, I should say, on these Benetos, but whatever, you're not really looking at that on a regular basis. Um, now we do have, was this? Yep, access to the inverter isolator just there. Light switches here, more of these um, uh, strip lighting setups just here. And this is access to the actual inverter and your main uh, breakers just in here, wiring loom could be used as storage. I'm not sure if you really would use that area of storage to be fair. Um, now, another ingenious use of space and, um, and then it also creates privacy is this door. So the door is like a structure like this with storage in here and here. I feel like you could mount a couple of hooks here to hang things should you wish, but then, that then exposes you to this extra cupboard in here, which gives you access to all the electronics and we'll have to cut to a shot of that. So um, smartly hidden away and a sensible use of space. So I'll just push that open. Now, in terms of your lifestyle stuff, we've got more storage on starboard. Over here, couple of cupboards just there, all on their own special closes, and then deeper storage down here with one shelf below just here. Now I think Mika, you, you walk this way and shoot back because then you go through this bulkhead and you have your own private massive head with shower. You could have a dance party in here if you had to. I don't know who does that, but it's huge. So I'm just at the sink, the loo is there, and the shower is through this door just here. So let's operate that, okay? Let's just give you some perspective. Not touching the roof, just touching the roof. Can almost put my arms out that way and can put my arms out that way. Space for all your shampoos and bits and pieces here. All of this usable space there. This is your shower mixer with your hot and cold, your, your, your drains just there, and another usable ledge and the steam can make its way up there and up there. Now, how does this work? Like that. You come through here, and we've got really good storage solutions just here because you're probably gonna have those little Helly Hansen toiletries bags. They will fit perfectly in here. One, two, three, four. So you could have toiletries bag, you know, the ladies' um, hair dryers and electrical items could go in the top one, and then you've also got the deep storage for your loo rolls and all those bits and pieces that you gotta put somewhere. So that's, that's just really clever. Sink, plenty of space in here. This will be access to, whoa, geez, that's, that's vast. So this is actually another storage area if it had to be, but you've, you do have direct access to the Seacox. That's for the raw water out for the sink. And just under here, this will be access to, yeah, that's all the loose seacocks. So that's pretty easy. Manual pump toilet, I guess you might be able to option that to electric. And behind here, you've got your holding tank. There is also a hook just here for hanging towels. And there's also another cupboard behind here. So we'll cut to a shot of that because when you close this door, 
Behind here is a massive hanging locker. So you actually will use this cabin to get changed because a lot of your shoes, underwear, jackets and things are gonna hang inside this locker in here. So it's not just a loo, it's a change room as well. Okay, so let's go check out the port cabin. So the cabin we're gonna, oh sorry, not cabin, hull. The hull we're gonna look at now is if you chose the four cabin version, you would have a mirror on either side of what we're about to see. Um, and in, in the owner's version, like this one, you, uh, you have that fancy setup on starboard and you have this setup on port for the guests. So let's make our way aft. So once again, you've got a really generous bed. Now, one thing a lot of people want to know, can I sit up in bed? Well, I'm going to say, yes, you can. Um, you got a little light here. you got a fan there. I can feel the air wafting through my opening window on port there. I've got a forward-facing escape hatch above my head. So we've got many options to stay comfortable and more than enough space for a couple. And notice how we've got glass here and the opening window there. So two people can sit up in bed. You know, you could put a, a tablet on a sticky thing there and watch a movie, or you could even mount a TV there if you're that way inclined and do it too. So that, that's kind of cool. So the blinds, they do have the sun block out and the mosquito block out. And as I mentioned, you do have those clip in block outs here. So if you wanted to have a sleep in the daytime, it is possible. We have this little bedside set up just here. That's good for handbags and briefcases. Nice little bench top area just there. I don't know if there's anything under the floor here. Let's have a little, oh yep, you can get in there. No, that's fixed. So tiny bit of storage. Uh, two uh, USBs and a 240 charger or plug just there. Small, small, oh no, deep and shallow. So it's like a one single shelf um, with a deeper shelf on top. So a little bit of storage there. But once again, you got this set up. So you can bring your luggage bags, decant all the stuff out of them, arrange it around the boat, and as you can see with my bags, just pop them below the bed, and that's on gas struts, so it's quite easy to access. Light switch just there, and bucket loads of headroom. Okay, so let's go and look at the forward cabin. We do have access, four points of access into the bilge, similar places, and we're just passing another little storage area which is about a foot deep with one single shelf in it. And I, I like how they've done the strip light here to so sort of illuminate this area a little bit. And this is the forward cabin. And you know what? You're not gonna feel like the poor cousin in this cabin. This is often, like I remember on the Lagoon 380, you used to feel like a bit of a poor cousin when you're up here. I've charted that boat many times in the med and it was, it was always like not as good, but this is great. Once again, can sit up in bed. A couple would be very comfortable. You've both got reading lights. You've got access to fresh air there. You've got access to fresh air up there. Um, you've got a fan just here. Um, you've got strip lighting just along here. This is really nice. You could spend a decent amount of time in this cabin. Um, getting changed, you are, okay, you're a little bit of the poor cousin getting changed here. The two of you are not gonna get changed at the same time. It's just gonna be one person, but I feel like you're probably not paying if you're in this cabin, so just take what you got. That's a good place for shoes, I reckon, just in there, so it's, you know, it's a sensible little spot. This is one, two, three shelves just here. We've got a little leather thing here, which is good for wallets and phones. We've got, oh, quite a deep storage in this one just here, so that's that could even take bags as well. And hanging storage, so that's, that's logical. Um, and then let's see if there's anything underneath this bed. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We will, uh, I'll, I'll leave a comment in the description if there is, because I don't know. So I think I've covered most of that. Let's just, let's just head back up on deck. Oh, sorry, obviously the guest toilet. How could I miss? So the guest toilet with its own separate stand up shower so you certainly don't get two toilets with two separate 
shower cubicles on a motorboat of 37 feet long. So that's pretty good. Uh, adjustable shower thingamajiggy here. You can, the steam will go out through this forward facing hatch just here. Strip lighting here, more strip lighting up there. And then this looks like it opens. That's uh, deep enough. You could, you could do four, once again, toiletries bags just in there, but you probably only, yeah, well, I mean, you're gonna have four people most likely, so that'll work. Got access to all your seacocks underneath here, and behind here is going to be the holding tank, and this is the inspection port. We've got one um, hook for showers, and yes, as Mika just pointed out, this is a sliding door, so that's quite a sensible uh, use of space, having a sliding instead of one of those doors that opened the other way. So let's, oh, more rain, funny that. It's just been a summer of rain. Anyway, see, I think, I think we've pretty much seen everything there. I did forget to point out the dinghy davits. So for those of you who aren't familiar with multi-holes, it's the most convenient way to deploy and use a dinghy because you're not having to take the outboard motor off and on every time, uh, install the fuel tank, etc. You literally just haul it up and go deploy the dinghy and go to shore. So that's super, super handy. But yeah, that's it guys. That's the XS11. Um, as I said, if, you, if you're wanting to social boat, if you're wanting to sail, it's not a high performance sailing catamaran, but it's got extra performance than your average catamaran. So it's gonna give you a bit of excitement. It's gonna give you a hell of a lot of enjoyment and it's gonna give you options. So for going places, you know, let's face it, everyone's busy. You're probably not gonna be going on holidays every month, but you will go out every weekend. And that's where I see this layout being really, really appealing. My name's Dan Jones. It's been Dan's Boat Life. See you on the next one.